Meanwhile, SmackDown's return to USA Network under our five-year domestic media rights agreement with NBC Universal has already driven strong and sustained viewership. Without a doubt, this partnership further strengthens our long-standing relationship with NBCU, and we're anticipating a strong draw for the upcoming debut of quarterly primetime specials, starting December 14th with Saturday night's main event on NBC. And with Raw's launch on Netflix nearing, both WWE and Netflix are actively preparing for an impactful debut on January 6th, which will expand the reach of WWE and deliver our flagship content to a global audience. As we close out the year and look to 2025, we're confident in the strength of our iconic properties and the momentum we're building towards significant milestones. From an exciting lineup of live events that include UFC 309 at Madison Square Garden later this month, WrestleMania in Las Vegas, and the first ever two-night SummerSlam at MetLife Stadium, to closing our acquisition of PBR, On Location, and IMG, all of which fuel further growth. With that, I'll turn the call over to Andrew. Good afternoon. As we previously disclosed, on September 26th, we reached a revised agreement to settle all claims asserted in the Lee UFC antitrust lawsuit for $375 million. In the third quarter, we recorded an incremental $40 million charge to bring the aggregate expense on our books to $375 million. On October 22nd, the court granted preliminary approval of the settlement. As a result, we made the first of three payments for $125 million into escrow in late October. We expect to pay the remaining $250 million in 2025, $125 in the first quarter, and $125 by the end of Q2. As we've mentioned, the settlement is anticipated to be deductible for tax purposes as and when paid. As a result, our tax distributions to members in the third quarter were reduced to reflect the settlement payment such that we didn't realize an adverse dollar-for-dollar -dollar impact to cash on hand. Third quarter reported results included three months of activity for both UFC and WWE. The reported results for the third quarter of 2023 include WWE activity for the period from September 12th through September 30th, 2023. To assist with comparability, we've presented supplemental financial information in our press release and IR website that includes WWE activity and the portion of WWE related to the corporate group for the period from July 1st through September 11th, 2023, as well as each quarterly period from January 1st, 2022 through September 11th, 2023. For the third quarter of 2024, we generated revenue of $681 million. Net income was $58 million. Adjusted EBITDA was $310 million, and our adjusted EBITDA margin was 46%. Including WWE activity for July 1st through September 11th, 2023, combined revenue for the third quarter was $685 million, combined adjusted EBITDA was $298 million, and our combined adjusted EBITDA margin was 44%. Inclusive of these amounts, revenue decreased 1%, adjusted EBITDA increased 4%, and adjusted EBITDA margin increased 2 percentage points. Our UFC segment generated revenue of $355 million in the quarter, a decrease of 11%, or $43 million. Adjusted EBITDA was $196 million, a decrease of 18%, or $43 million. UFC's adjusted EBITDA margin was 55%, down from 60% in the prior year period. As expected, revenue was impacted by the timing of the events calendar. UFC had 10 total events in the third quarter of this year, compared to 13 total events in the prior year period. As Ari mentioned, the health of the business remains extremely strong, and UFC continues to benefit from the meaningful tailwinds of the experience economy. Media rights and content revenue decreased 19% to $216 million. The decrease was driven by one less numbered event and two fewer fight nights as compared to the prior year period. The contractual escalation of media rights partially offset the decrease from the timing of the event's calendar. Live events revenue decreased 1% to $51 million. Ticket sales reflected the decline in the number of total events in the third quarter as compared to the prior year. This headwind was essentially offset by strong under